Angie Ann's checking in. I want to welcome everyone to another edition of our Culture Text podcast. It's all about the people, the creators, the architects behind the culture. Some of the signs and symbols that you see in the restaurants that you go to and the people that you follow. This isn't just by chance that you see this. There is a brilliant mind behind it. And with me today, the CEO and founder of Ann Pizza, which here in the DMV, we can't get enough of Ann Pizza. Michael mm. Lestoria, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let, let me start off with how you started in the business. Cause this is not, you know, your first business. It's not, no. Right. So no. you, you, you're not new to building a business. I think I need to build a company that is based on a core set of values, right? Mm -hmm. Like in terms okay. of who I am, who we are mm -hmm. and what we believe in fundamentally and see if we can't build a business off of that. So, well, and pizza was really about um, creating a cultural movement around a core set of values, not about changing the game of pizza. <laughs> okay. Even though it came in the form of pizza, it was right. it was a much bigger idea, which is if we can create a movement and we can literally get a whole bunch of like-minded people, diverse, but like-minded people in the sense of we sort of believe in the same values, mm. like celebrate oneness, right? Allowing you yeah. to be yourself, yeah. allowing us to celebrate your individuality how powerful could that movement possibly be? Right. And the reason we chose pizza is because pizza was dated. Mm, you know, it was dated. dated. It was dated. It was old. When it was you tired. Say, when you say <laughs> pizza is old, dated, and tired. It was tired. In, in what way do you mean? It was, I mean, in the, in the number one and number two pizza concepts in America are mm. Domino's and Pizza Hut. Okay. And the number one pizza company in the world is Pizza Hut. Mm. When's the last time you went to Pizza Hut? Uh, I don't remember. It's dated. Yeah, yeah you're right. I haven't, I haven't right? been to Pizza Hut in a while. Minute. So I think it just the, just the opportunity, and, and then the second part, everybody consumes pizza. Right. It right. by it inherently is inclusive. Mm -hmm. Right. And the one thing that like when I travel the world, or you can always find a pizza shop, and you can always get yeah. a good slice of pizza, no matter where you are. You could yeah. be on a remote island, you know, off the coast of Belize, and yeah. like there's three pizza shops <laughs> on an island with 600 people. We um, gonna find some pizza. Yeah, we're there gonna find some pizza. So, pizza. so that was interesting to me. Something. Okay, if we can build this cultural movement, we can really impact you know broader society because there could be a real business that could be built because mm -hmm. everyone eats pizza. Right. And so if we can make this thing work, I think it's got some real scale. And um, and so the next part was okay. Well, I have this idea. It's a values based organization. Mm. What are we gonna call it? Where is it gonna live? Right. Right, where is its roots going to be planted? Yeah. And let's lead with a symbol okay. that captures those values. Okay. Right? A like, sim like a and, and when you're talking symbol, was it like more like a character? Like did you did you look at all this the different symbols? Did you kind of lay out symbols and say, okay, we want to find a symbol for No, it was or? more about like we did like what there there needs to be if this is going to be a real values based organization and we're mm -hmm. gonna go all in on that and culture is gonna become so important to us, then we need this sort of defining symbol. And that symbol just happened to be the ampersand. Mm -hmm. And to us, the ampersand stands for, it stands for inclusion. It stands for unity. It stands mm -hmm. for connectedness um, and all that kind of touchy feely stuff. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if we could have just called it and we would have, but that was a little <laughs> too, you know, that was a little <laughs> too crazy, right? Cause <laughs> I, we still have to sell pizza to make this thing work. Right. So, and pizza that simple. So people right. always ask me like why this crazy name, a lot of people can't pronounce it. It's like, yeah. it really was about the symbol yeah. and us promoting unity and us, you know, creating this culture where people literally can, as I mentioned, they can bring themselves to work. Mm -hmm. They can be who they are. They can do themselves. They can just embrace the fact that they're working for a company that gives a damn that mm. wants to do good. And they can just, come with you know the best version of themselves and just be honest and authentic mm -hmm. uh, and there's an opportunity for you to to do something special here so i know i got really wordy my apologies no but that was that's was awesome no you really you really broke it down now i want to take it back to 2011 so you decided you want to be in dc mm -hmm. you know this is where you want it makes sense for you you know economically and with yeah. values so your first, let's talk about your first location. Like how many people did you need to get it off the ground? Where did you, when you first find the location, like what did it look like and how did you do this intricate build out? Yeah. So it was H street Northeast. Okay. And it All was, right. Shout out to H street. Yeah. H street. yeah we love H street. <laughs> H street. And uh, it, it, it's funny because 
H Street, we picked H Street for two reasons. Number one, that's where I found myself spending the most amount of time. Okay. Right. Just, it felt the most real. Um, and, you know, that's an important part of making sure that the brand starts in the right place. Mm. And secondly, it was probably one of the only locations that a landlord would accept us. Really? Right. I don't have any restaurant experience. Landlords, when you open up a restaurant, landlords generally want to make sure that you're going to be around. Oh, okay. You know, throughout know the course of the lease. And, you know, they don't want to take chances on, you know, new concepts, especially out of towners in, in these smaller mm. boxes, right? If you're going to, if you're going to go lease three, four five, 6,000, you know, square feet, that's a very different conversation. But uh -huh. when you're taking like 1500 square feet, it's a little bit different. <laughs> okay. And, um, and so it was, uh, it was an old Chinese restaurant that was completely dilapidated. Mm. Um, the building was essentially falling apart and, uh, and we did a lease and I believe it was, Three thousand dollars a month for the dilapidated building. Yeah, three thousand dollars a month to lease it. To lease it. Yeah, because nobody wanted the space, but it was perfect for us. So right. we, you know, we got in, and when you, as an entrepreneur, you as a business person, when you do the things that are a reflection of who you are as a person, mm -hmm. right? Like the music that you listen to or the clothing that you wear, when you create your vision mm -hmm. right of what works for you that's what people are attracted to that's how you create the emotional connection they may walk by it and look in like that's weird as hell right like but i'm curious yeah, yeah. i'm gonna walk inside because i've never seen that before who's behind this what are they up to yeah and maybe they connect with it for you know one of the 30 reasons that you built it mm -hmm. but that's all they need to do is connect with a part of it and they're probably connected with it because they're interested in it because it is different mm -hmm. and it does touch you know a part of them and i think that's so important because so many people when they get into business they try to create what they think people want mm -hmm. and what people want is they want you they want that authenticity they want that weirdness mm -hmm. they want to know <laughs> things about you that maybe you even don't know right but right. they want to connect with people in that way. I mean, my best friendships are the most authentic mm. and they're some of the strangest people on the planet earth because <laughs> they inspire me, Yeah, but they're out there and they're out there and they're communicating that I want a piece of that. Or yeah. when I talk to them, I want to like be inspired by their being. Yeah, And that's a really cool thing. So I think brands need to do that as well, which is stop trying to figure out how to create something that's going to be successful and start looking internally and saying, what do you have that the world needs to see? Well, what do you have that makes you special that you want to put out there in the form of a product or a service? It could be anything. Right. And, and do it your own way. But do you think it's also because, I mean, that takes a certain level of self-awareness. And, you know, like you said, you, you kind of started in sales. And you know how the sales business can be. Sales is very like numbers. And mm -hmm. so here's product. Here's uh, de deliver product. Get money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it, a lot of times. I think people in sales or just that industry in general doesn't have a lot of that self-awareness and like, who am I, as opposed to, like you said, just trying to create a product that, that is going to sell or that's yeah. going to be profitable. So I think it's awesome that you, you know, like you said, you, you're creating from really your heart, you're creating from your culture. So when we go into an Am pizza, we're basically getting to know Michael story a little bit better. That's the idea. That's but now, it but now it's a family, right? It's a tribe. Yeah, it's a tribe. So now it's mm -hmm. about our decision-making is about the collective, right? I, I, we've always felt that culture is, um, the sum of its ingredients, mm -hmm. right? Culture can be good. Culture can be bad. Mm -hmm. And the ingredients in our business is our people. And so every time someone's added to the team, to the family, to the tribe, like our culture shifts mm -hmm. and we need to be mindful of making sure that as we make decisions, that that decision is really for us and it's made by us in a way that we're really proud of as a group. Yeah. But look, I mean, we're sitting here today talking and you're feeding me a piece and this whole thing exists because of you and yeah. your vision and the team's vision and what you all want this to be. But yeah. I can sense the authenticity, mm. right? You're talking about things that interest you and you're interviewing people that you feel like you connect with on a certain level and you're yeah. sharing their stories in only a way that you can share them. I mean, that's your business, but that doesn't exist if you remove that, mm. if you remove the authenticity of it. If we remove you from it, what's left, you mm -hmm. know, a couple of people talking to a microphone <laughs> and that may not, that may not work. Right. Right. You know, the sort of, not disingenuous, but the sort of unauthentic approach to opening and pizza would have been go right to the heart of Washington, DC, where mm -hmm. you get the most amount of eyeballs mm -hmm. and take the most expensive lease and, um, 
and try to sell as much pizza as you can. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that can work, but that just wasn't us. Right. And so I think doing it in a place where we felt the most comfortable, where we spent the most amount of time, you know, at restaurants, at bars Mm -hmm. with people in the community, and then, you know, picking a location that we felt was reflective of like really building this thing from the ground up and then going all in and letting people know who you are and allowing for that to happen. I mean, the reason why Ann Pizza is what it is is because when we opened up, we worked our butts off Mm. and I was working in that pizza shop for the first nine months and literally touching, you know, every single guest you know, verbally, Mm -hmm. you know, or with eye contact or in a way where I was trying to establish a connection, let people know that we're here for like, we're here for the long haul. We're not doing this to make a quick buck. Like we're doing this to imprint. And we literally supported every cause that we could. We Mm -hmm. were at every community event, just putting ourselves out there and the community really embraced that. Yeah. And I think part of the reason why people consume and pizza is because they like the pizza. Mm -hmm. Part of them like the brand, but a lot of people like the reputation that we've built Absolutely. and are totally down with supporting something that they feel like is doing good and yeah, doing and right back. by them and the community. And that's yeah. a big, big piece of, I think, when you open up a restaurant or retail concept of, of thinking through that and being able to do that. Yeah. Which is a whole nother conversation. You guys have really been big on, uh, you know, making sure that people get a livable wage. You guys seem to really be behind that. And I remember, I think when the mayor signed a declaration, Mm -hmm. it was like, I I believe she was nearer. She was right outside. Right. Wasn't she like right outside, but you guys have kind of been a driving force or a big supporter of saying, Hey, let's make sure people here, especially because DC as rapidly as it's changing, as expensive as it's getting, you know, working below a, a livable wage, you can't, you, you work in Ampeats in DC and you can't live in DC. You'd have to like, you know, move out. So I like how you guys are really behind that, that movement. Yeah. And that's, you know, that, that, that to me is people often ask, cause it's not popular in the restaurant business to right. be supporting, um, an increased, you know, federal minimum wage. And I'm not someone either. Like if you get to know me, I'm not big on government intervention, mm-hmm. right? Okay. It's not my thing. Right. Um, but you know, I think it's it's just companies and big companies in particular, they just they haven't done the right thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's been entirely too long um, that wages have not been adjusted to be appropriate for 2018. And mm-hmm. so I think, you know, businesses like Ann Pizza, the first thing we try to do is lead by example, okay. right? Build a real business case study that says, hey, you can pay this mm-hmm. and you can succeed. Right. Because that's the right. easiest way to keep the haters away of, listen, <laughs> if you don't like what I'm saying, just take a look at what I'm doing. We're an open book. Like, here's our numbers. Okay. Like, learn from what we're doing to maybe help inform why you can pay close to a living wage or above the minimum. And it can work for your business. But okay. the reason why we did it was, it's just humanity. It'd be a human. Yeah. Like you just said it right there. It's not that hard to figure out how far a dollar goes yeah. or doesn't go in this city. Yeah. And so as an employer, you need to be thinking about if you want your people to feel appreciated and supported, mm-hmm. like wage is a step in that direction. Now it's not the only thing. And I think a lot of people that come to work at Ann Pizza, it's not just for the wage. It's because I think first and foremost, that they feel like they can be themselves. Right. The wage thing just helps with that appreciation and that trust. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it keeps people, uh, keeps people working longer. But again, it's only one small, small facet. If you were to tell me like how much does wage impact the culture? I think very, very small percentage. And you'd Mm -hmm. be surprised because you think people rank it so much higher than they actually do it. People just want to feel like they're a part of something. Yeah. They want to feel connected. They want to feel inspired. If you yeah. can inspire people and you pay them well and you give them good benefits mm. and you are developing them, not just professionally, but personally, mm. and they trust you and you trust them yeah. and you respect their opinions. I mean, I, the list, I can go on on and on and on about like how to be a good employer, but there are so many, and we, there's plenty of things we don't do well. Mm. I mean, look, I'm not sitting here saying that <laughs> we've got it all figured out. I'm saying we are committed to consistently trying different things mm-hmm. all the way from like having a live um, text messaging program. Mm. Um, you know, we have a guy called the pizza plug and yeah. literally 24 seven, you can get him on the other end texting back and forth, anything you want started off internally. So you're a tribe member. You see something in a pizza shop that you like Uh text us. You don't like 
text us nice. um, and just have an authentic organic conversation. If you want to play, you know, your favorite song in the pizza shop that you're working, like shoot us a note and we'll work on that. Right, Cause there's right. a lot of ways that we're just trying to say, Hey, like engage, mm-hmm. give us new ideas mm-hmm. on like the cloth that we're wearing or, you know, what should that, that fall winter and pizza, <laughs> you know, swag line be, or, or yeah. what should, you know, basically anything and everything we can do to promote this company being about its people and the fact yeah. that we make decisions based on the people's ideas and input, not I love that. mine. Yeah, right. I have I wacky that. ideas, but we all do. And so now, and pizza is really democratized where it's like, yeah, it may have been one or two people's initial idea, yeah. but now I can tell you that the meetings that I sit in, the people I'm surrounding myself with and mm. the tribe members that we have, they're just as passionate and sometimes more passionate. Mm. And the ideas they have that are going to change the game for and pizza, um, they're, they're not coming from me. Mm, it's and the tribe. It's the tribe. And, yeah. and and when I think about who's the most on brand, mm. right? I'm kind of, I'm 38 years old and I'm kind of like the old man. Like here comes dorky <laughs> Michael. You know, you know what I mean? Like it's, I'm the old man. And I'm like the average age is 22 and people are looking at me like, hey, grandpa. Hey, old man. Yeah. <laughs> You're the old man yeah. of the tribe. I'm wearing the sneakers from three years ago and I... <laughs> And they're like, yeah. they got the new release. They got the new release. So I think there, there's an element of that where it's like, you know, and I love, and that's what I love the most about this business is right. that every day when I show up to work, someone inspires me to right. be a better leader, to be a better human being, mm-hmm. to reassess my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I like the all black get up, man. Yeah, you, it just, you know, it's easy. It's, e- it's yeah, easy. It's easy. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Let me ask you though. As you continue to expand, right? You know, we're we're going into this is like five years, right? You guys are about five years. Yeah, we're we're coming up on our sixth coming this our is sixth six? birthday. Oh, okay, all right. Happy yeah. early birthday to you. Thank you. And you guys are like steadily expanding. Yeah. How do you feel like you can keep up with scale when? Because again, you 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 source locally. Yeah. Um, or you you know you're you're into the quality of your Mm -hmm. food which a lot of times is going to be more expensive so um livable wages Mm -hmm. all these are things that a lot of times we hear from the business community are what kills businesses right is that you know you can't keep up or you can't it's it's the overhead is higher than what you're able to to get back um so what do you say to that for people who see see that hey you're actually scaling like you're you're moving i mean you have over 20 locations um you know like how are you scaling that without losing too much? Or, yeah. You know, cause I'm sure there's a business where they say, man, he could be making so much more if, you know, if he wasn't putting out so much more, right. Or using, using yeah. cheaper products or cheaper this or cheaper that. But again, you have a different set of values. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I think for us, it's, we always have wanted to be the best mm-hmm. and the best version of ourselves. So if that means we have a thousand pizza shops or if that means we have a hundred or if that means we stop tomorrow, mm. whatever the best means, that's what we strive for. Got and it. so in being the best, it's a race to the top, not a race to the bottom. Mm. It's easy in business to cut corners, right. to cut expense, right. to make more profit. Um, but that's also very short-sighted. Mm. To us, what, what we think about is every single time we open up a new pizza shop, mm-hmm. how is the first pizza shop and the guests that frequent the first pizza shop, how is that experience getting better? Mm. And that's the mark of a company. And we don't always do it, but that's the mark of, I think, a company that's thinking about things the right way, okay. which is with growth, we have more resources. With more resources, we make bigger investments. With more investments we can actually develop people. We think about this, like how much investing could I make in hiring people to develop people when we had a couple of pizza shops, we just didn't have that much money to go around. Right. right. And um, the cool thing about Ann Pizza is that we've never, in six years, no one has taken profit out of the business. No one. Every single dime of profit that we've made, we've Mm -hmm. reinvested in our growth and we've reinvested in our people. Wow. That's incredible. Six years. And I don't, I honestly, if I don't know a time or a place when we actually will, Wow. um, because it's fun to invest in people. Like we can build out and we're in the early stages of building out, you know, and university and think about this though. I mean, we can literally hire teachers to teach Mm. these kids, right? Our tribe members, average age of 22 years old, not just 
you know, how to work in a pizza shop, but how to be a leader. Yeah. Absolutely. And this world and this country needs leaders. Absolutely. Good leaders. Good leaders. <laughs> we good need leaders. you to lead us. Like yeah. that is a real thing. So yeah. thinking about leadership development, the investments that we can make, mm -hmm. we can do it with millions of dollars, not thousands of dollars. Right. Because you guys do it for the culture. Yeah. And this is a big part of why I wanted to interview you. Um, our young people, they're out here. The stuff that, that you guys have built a built your whole business kind of on is, is culture that they live and breathe and who they are essentially yeah. right like how you guys have the definitions of and pizzas like we're kanye chills or you know <laughs> where you go to kanye's dab place or, to relax yeah like like yeah like those types of things are again that's that's part of who we are that's yeah. that's who who we are and um how would you tell a young person who again they're into sneakers like i love how you did the collaboration with the sneakers with nike right they're in the clothes they're in the style they're into hip-hop they're into music dance how would you tell them or how would you, what would you say to them about taking their own personal culture and their own backyards and their own neighborhoods and flipping that into business? You know? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, listen, I think it, it really starts with having the confidence to just start doing, mm -hmm. I know it sounds like a crazy thing, mm -hmm. but you know, the ability to connect with people digitally or socially uh, is greater today than ever before. Mm -hmm. The barriers just aren't what they used to be. Okay. You know, whether that means that you're a musician and you want to be known mm -hmm. or you want to put something out, like you can be found, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no real formula to, you know, what makes an artist successful today versus the sort of record label formula that worked you know a decade or two decades ago Agreed. that was very selective and you were either in or you were out right now like people are being signed left and right to mm -hmm. record label deals um because you just need to have a thing mm -hmm. and that thing could be a really interesting look mm -hmm. a really interesting uh you know song mm -hmm. a really interesting anything and you can get found socially so mm -hmm. i think a lot of that has to do with just being okay with being yourself and expressing yourself mm -hmm. and just letting it go mm -hmm. and don't let, you know, society or don't let what you think other people want to see hold you back from being, you know, the person that is ultimately inside. Mm -hmm. And so I would say it's actually the golden age for people with style, with people with <clears throat> taste, mm -hmm. um, the real trendsetters. Mm -hmm. I think it's the golden age because I think that you have an audience now and you may have never had an audience before. And that right. audience doesn't have to go through an approval process of other people picking what they think is culturally relevant. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist. You pick yourself. Yeah. And the platforms now have democratized this ability for you to get known or to get recognized. Mm -hmm. And so for creative people or for people that, you know, just have something inside of them, I think just put it out there mm -hmm. and just understand that when you put it out there, like people are going to judge you. True. But that's fine, mm. right? Better to be judged than not to be judged at all, mm. right? Better to be known and better to, to impact people than not at all. If you have something inside you that needs to come out, you need to tell that story, go tell it. So mm. I know it's good. That's not really like a great answer, but the answer is it's a lot easier now than ever before. You just have to start doing. Mm. And sometimes by doing, it means just start talking, mm. just start expressing yourself in whatever way you feel like that self-expression is the most authentic in terms of who you are, mm -hmm. just go do it. And I think that through the doing it, doors will start to open. Yeah. And when doors start to open, you'll start to get a better sense of what it is that you want to be doing or what it is that you should be doing. Um, go, just go. do more, do more, express yourself, be confident, be comfortable and see what comes from it. Right. Like I right. can't tell you how many times my friends come to me with ideas. I'm like, go. Right. Do it. <laughs> Go. Let's go. Like, mm -hmm. what, like, there's nothing holding you back from that except yourself, mm -hmm. except the fact that when you woke up today, you decided not to do what you ultimately wanted to do, mm -hmm. right? If it's Sunday night and you're dreading Monday morning mm -hmm. because you don't want to go punch that clock or you don't want to go back to work, right. I would say, don't. Mm -hmm. What are you waiting for? And mm -hmm. I know that there's the fundamental, like, put a, you know, you got to have food on the table and a roof up, but I'm saying... Life is too short. Like pretty soon my 38 will be 50, mm. will be 60, will be 80. And all of a sudden what happened? I think it's making sure that every single 
week, you make the decision to do what you're doing. You are ultimately in control. You can live any life that you want. Mm. You can live off whatever means you feel is appropriate. Yeah. I know people that can live off of very little, right. people that require a lot, <laughs> right. but the reality is people can live and there's a lot of flexibility. You just have to align with the risks that you're willing to take yeah. with the happiness that you ultimately want. But I just think it's, it's now is the time. Don't wait any longer, like pursue those dreams, mm. quit that job go into an uncomfortable place where mm. you want to um, express yourself. And I think you'd be surprised at what results you can get from it. This is your headquarters. This is what you built off of your visions and you built it off your values. You built it off your own, like being who you are genuinely. And I think we need to see more of that. Um, you know, successful people yeah. who said, you know, I'm successful being who I am and allowing, you know, having others and accepting others who they are and, and incorporating that, like you said, creating this democracy yeah. of innovation and you it's keep a, innovating. It's a platform. And, yeah. and, and, you know, when I, when I think about who I owe thanks to, um, you know, it's our tribe members. It's mm. the people that come to work every single day and mm. work tirelessly in the pizza shops, but also give us that inspiration, give us that style mm -hmm. and allow the brand to constantly evolve. And then for Washington DC, right. Our roots, yeah. our headquarters, yeah. um, this is home to us. The city has been so good to us and the people of the city have supported us through thick and through thin. Like I said, we've made plenty of mistakes. Right. We made plenty of mistakes. We don't always get that pizza right. Shops <laughs> never as clean as we'd like it to be. Um, not every interaction is perfect, but you know, we're committed to 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 doing our part in lifting up DC and more importantly telling the story of the people mm -hmm. and the culture of what make this city so special, what makes this city so special. And I look forward to continuing to grow and to tell every single person on the planet Earth about what makes Washington, D.C. special and why we are here. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, who would have thought a Washington, D.C. based pizza brand is now blowing up in New York City? D.C. pizza wow. to New York doesn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. In New York, of all places, um, right? But it does. <laughs> right, but it, it doesn't, but it does. It does. Exactly. There it is. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks for you. having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.